Okay. First, a sound check. How do I sound? Here's the puppy cam. Wanda sleeping. This is a ZV-1 Mark II. So I'm going to be showing you some things. And I like this feature because I can do a menu. You know, just hit that. Hit the menu. And I can start showing you some things uh, that's on any camera or something like that. How you can do settings. But I just want to show you how streamlined this is. Look at that. Six menu options. If I hit the shutter button, okay, it's back to normal. Uh, it's a little bit too bright. So let me deal with the exposure. Okay. So it has to be on this end right here. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. So let's go back to the menu. All right. That's much better, isn't it? So you notice how straight it is. And you can see the menu. And uh, I got it maxed just about all the way. Let's see. I, I can move this up too. Um, reason why I put it down there, sometimes it's easier, but sometimes you can go like this too, you know. But I didn't want to detract from, uh, so I'll do it just like this. That way you don't see the glass or anything or the piece of paper to the side. And that's a great shot right there. So now I can show you the menu from this Studio 32. And basically this is what I was talking about, the cuff. And what I can do with there is just bring it back to zero. Just to show you. Isn't that neat? I can do it all back here. Or I can go up here to the ZVE-10 and show it this way. So I can do it from here. And what I did, I was trying to figure out which camera was on that was echoing. And uh, it was uh, the ZVE-1, this bad boy right here. And the reason why uh, it was echoing is because, just like Sly, I took it out and he did some things with the microphone, came back. You have to change the settings back. All right, so I, I turned it off and the echo went away. So, there we go. All right. So, kind of like a product showcase on the ZVE-1. It's very good. I like it. Uh, what I also like about this camera, so you just put your hand in. Um, with this, you can just, you know, all you have to do is just pull on it and it'll close. I don't know if you can see it. So, you know, to get out and then to get in. And then you just do that. And it tightens automatically. Uh, let me go to the other one. Okay, same thing. All right, this is what it looks like. Very good, easy to handle. I like this much better. Uh, when I was using the, uh, you know, uh, the long leash, what happened was uh, this was banging on the belt. So it was too long. So I got the, uh, this one. This leash, uh, not the uh, the leather one, the leather strap. This is the uh, the Peak Design uh, leather strap, but it's the smaller one. Okay, and I'll show you that in a moment. What I did with the cameras, I changed camera bags again just to show you something. But this is one of the items I got. Um, I'm getting uh, a soft release shutter button. It comes in three colors. One is gold. One is red, one is black, but the first one that's coming in is a black one. And that way it's, it's going to hide, all right? Uh, but you notice I got a little red right here. 
red, and then I have a red one too. So I might put a red on there. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this is kind of neat. And I'll show you a video of me um, with the setup with the bag and stuff that I've used. But uh, just want to show you that it's in sleep mode. So it goes to sleep after two minutes. And it doesn't lose much battery at all. Okay, so I can just turn it on. Here, let me go to this menu. No, not the Streamer X. This one. Okay. And so I see I just turn it on. Isn't that neat? Now, I can turn it off. And the nice thing about that is there's a little switch right here now. Just turn it. Now look at the little. Uh, I like that little icon. That's a new uh, update. So you just turn it on. And you see how fast it comes on? I have it in manual mode, so I was going to show some things in another video on how to get the different camera systems. But uh, anyway, this, this is what I got. So like I said, you just go like that. Release. Camera's off. Got another piece of paper there. These are done. I got a dummy battery in the uh, ZV-1 Mark II. So that's probably the best position right here. Now I have to keep an eye on the ZV-1 or ZV-E-1, make sure it doesn't overheat. The ZV-E-10 is, is a champ and the A6100. This bad boy, who's babysitting uh, Wanda so I can keep an eye on her. First mirrorless camera. Of course, it's an APS-C. But it's a champ. It doesn't overheat. I've left it on for a couple of days. I couldn't believe it. Um, you know, dummy batteries are great. All right. It doesn't mess with the original batteries. And the only time you use the original batteries is to uh, when you're going out to take a shoot or going on a trip or something, you want to take a camera along. So there's a ZV-1 Mark II, there's a ZV-E-10, and there's a ZV-E-1. And what I can do is this thing, go back here, and you see I'm centered now, kind of. And same thing with the ZV-E-10. Yeah, I'm center. So... Let me stop it real quick and uh, show you uh, what I've also done. Okay, so I'm back. She's up. So let's go back to the ZV-1 Mark II. Remember this a couple of videos ago? Oh, by the way, I got my energy drink, Frappy Mocha. So this thing is very nice. It's very spacious for a small bag, okay? Come out. But when you open it up, the camera, even with the divider and the stuff I put in there, it just, it was too loose. And then it would roll around in the bag, so it scared me, okay? And let me go to ZB-10. Okay, this is a little bit better, all right? So it scared me. So I says, this isn't working out. As much as I love it, I can put two lens in here, you know, and carry it along. But then you're adding bag after bag after get bag. And I want to be minimalist. So I want to go out on a shoot and just carry a little stuff. So I went to the store, Best Buy and the camera exchange, like usual. And at the camera exchange, they had the Think Tank, and it's, uh, what is it, the Speed Changer version 3. Now, this is the right side of the bag, okay? Nothing's shaking, nothing's moving. It has a couple of um, um, slots, or, so if I open up the open, the main one, I got my 
extra external battery charger like for the cell phone. I can put the cell phone in here too. Okay. I got SD cards. I got uh, that ring. So if I don't want to have the lens hood on the uh, Q3, which is in here, then I got the extra batteries. And then the Peak design too. So anyway, so I got one battery in there. If I open this up, now, there you go. So I, I put the camera back in there. All right. So I'll take it out. Look how easy it comes out. Okay. And I'll put this back over here. Then, if you look at it, okay, I have... I'm trying to remember this. So this keeps the lens fits right on top of it. The body is it has enough space so that the camera doesn't move. It protects the lens and stuff. The LCD is protected by this pocket right here. And on this pocket to stabilize it, I got the two other batteries. You know, uh, this works on the uh, SL2S and also on the uh, Q3. Perfect. Okay, so, and then also, my little uh, Targus California bag that I, that I put the ZB-1 Mark II in, you know, it has the uh, external uh, power source for the uh, dummy battery, and I got four of these batteries in here, or three, in fact, but, you know, very mobile. Very small, and they all pack a punch. So that's what I have in here, okay? I transferred everything out of that into here. Now, the neat trick is this was the camera bag for the Q3, but it's big. Here, let me go like it. It's big. And let me do this too. You need to show everything, okay? This is a big bag. It, got, it hides my face, all right? But it comes with two handles. And instead of carrying that big case I had before, I open it up. And remember I was telling you that uh, I got the leash from Peak Design. It's now mounted on my SL2S and I can do this and I can carry the camera here and I can carry this camera you know on the right hand or I can have this on the left you know it doesn't matter uh, but what I usually do is I have it in its case that one and I uh, and this is the way I do it first I put this case over Okay, and what I did was I took the strap from the Targus and I put it in here and I hooked up the two cl clips that usually you hook up on there together. And then I put it through the handhold, okay, so it wouldn't uh, flop. And this is how I do it. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so this is on my left hand side. And I put the camera into there. Just close it. Okay, I'm going to step back. So you see? Very good. Sorry, uh, let me do this. I hope I, you can still hear me. And I'll step back. There we go. Okay. Now, I picked this up for two hundred and fifty dollars. This is the Sigma uh, forty-five millimeter, and it's an f two point eight DGDN for the Leica. It has a fifty-five uh, millimeter diameter. There's the lens hood. It's all metal. It has autofocus 
aperture ring. And I've already taken some shots with this camera. It's fantastic. Everything is in focus. Just take this off. And you see, this is much easier to carry with this 45 millimeter, okay, full frame. And I got the 24 millimeter too, and it's the F1.4. So I got those two lenses. Now the 1.4 24 millimeter is just a little bit more. But if I have the 28 millimeter in this one, and this is the 45, that's all the lenses I need. One kind of like a 50 millimeter, the other one like a 24. So you get like your 35, 50 in a way. 28 is right between 24 and 35. And then 45 is right next to that and the 50. So I figured that's the best. But I turn this off. Uh, I repurposed where I put the filters. In here, I have the battery charger for the battery, and it'll work for both cameras in here, okay? Uh, I got the other battery charger in the trunk, you know, with the big uh, uh, backpacks where I can change out the lenses. But for a short haul, I got the pockets filled USB, <clears throat> excuse me, I got the rain jacket in here, but you see this 24 to 70, it's huge, it's heavy, and especially when you put it on here, this is a heavy camera too, but you can tell the difference because then you're holding it like this over time, and it's difficult, you'll get tired. So, what did I do? I just did it like this. I'm trying to figure out how I put it in there, yeah. That. And uh, with this camera in there now, just take this off. Let me find that. There it is, right there. Put on the lens hood, or that was the lens hood, the uh, lens gap. And I just put in the cam, you know. So, camera, lens, 24 to 70, filters, battery, cable for the battery, USB-C uh, to uh, my uh, iPhone, which is uh, the old type, the Lightning. And there you get it. So I picked up a new lens at 45 millimeters. And now I'm going to show you some pictures. Okay, I'm going to put it in share. There we go. I'm going to bring the screen over. Make it large. Okay, I'm going to do a command I. Bring it down. So, this is with the 45 millimeter. Okay, you can see the 45 millimeter there. It's a uh, six by, you know, it's 6K. And uh, I'll say the 2.8, okay? That's what it basically is. And uh, I think the ISO was at 50. But you know, I tried different things. So let, let's look at some pictures, okay? I'm just scrolling down. I tried different settings. This is all raw file, so it turns darker, okay? But uh, look at that. If we uh, increase it, and I'm far away, all right? I'm, the 45 millimeters, I'm saying about 40 feet away from her. But look at this. With the uh, 24 megapixel camera, okay? It's not like the Q3, and I'm going to show you the difference. So you see, she's a little bit out of focus, but that's because, but the picture quality still looks good. 
So if I go to, let's say, uh, those sleeves to the right, uh, let's see, and, oh, I'm going to use the wrong mouse. No, I guess not. I can only go up and down. I thought I could go sideways, but I can't. Okay. Yeah, I can. There we go. Like if it'll come up. I don't know what happened. But anyway, let's go to the next picture. And we'll just scroll down, okay? I hope my voice is still there. Okay, that's it. So this is off the SL2S, all right, with this lens. It's sharp, excellent. This is only a 24 megapixel camera, and with the less weight, it's, I appreciate it very much. <laughs> so let me get out of here. Uh, I'm going to check this, see if it let me yet, it lets me, all right, now I'm going to do the uh, Q3, and this is what I've learned also, all right, back again, so, I did the JPEG and the um, RAW files, and I'm hoping you can hear my voice. Let me take a look. Yep, you can hear it. Okay. Just want to be careful. There we go, bring it down like that. So, look how sharp this picture is. I'm just going to go scroll down. Uh, Raw, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, raw, and then JPEG, okay? Same thing here, raw, JPEG. So the JPEG is always lighter, the raw is always a little bit darker. I'm used to seeing it more white on other cameras, but with uh, the DNG files made from Leica, it's just a little bit different. And it might be Adobe trying to fix it up. You know, I got Do Adobe on here also. But uh, you can see where's uh, JPEG. Now, the difference between a 60 megapixel camera and a, you know, a 24 megapixel is the cropping. So I'm farther out than when I was looking at Wanda. But look what happens. I just zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. All right. So it's not clear. I got to find out what I was focusing on. But anyway, if I scroll back out, look how sharp it is. I think it's over here what I was looking at. But, as you can see, look how beautiful that picture is. Even if I went to the, uh, the fence, okay? Now I'll just go to the fence. So that looks kind of sharp. But you see, uh, if I just continue on, you can start seeing the wood grains. It's starting to fall apart now, but still... That's a great image for 60 megapixel. And that's why I went with the 60 megapixel uh, uh, camera. So, um, let's go to the next one. That's the JPEG. Okay. It's just to show you that uh, the different parts I, I was doing in manual. This is all manual, not auto, okay? And that's what I'm going to show you on this also. Now, what you see here, 
These are bird feathers, folks. So I got a couple of killers that are living with me, a cat and a dog. They won't fess up who they did it, and they're pleading the fifth. But there's the evidence, and what I'm looking for is what animal that's not eating, that's the one that got the bird, okay? And it might be my cat, because he's been saying, hey, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Well, it could be my dog, too. I just don't know. But uh, I thought I'd show that to you. That's raw. This is the JPEG. And, you know, you've seen these. See that? This is prettier in the raw file. Okay. So, let's zoom in on here. Because this is, I was close. Now, I want to show you something. I know there's bugs around here and I can't find them. Okay, I looked underneath the leaves and stuff, but uh, you can see holes in the plant. But look at that. Look how sharp and clear that is. So I'm gonna go right back out. It looks like a salad, doesn't it? But it has beautiful flowers on it. There's the JPEG. Uh, she was moving. There's the cat. Yeah, he uh, he came out and she was chasing him and he jumped over there and she can't get to him. Okay. Yeah, I think these were the raw and I had it in the wrong settings. So anyway. No, those are movies. No? Probably had the lens cap on. <laughs> I've been known to do that. Okay, let's go back to uh, the camera. So, let me uh, pause this real quick. Okay, it looks like another 30 minute, unfortunately. So, in order to put it in manual mode, this is the aperture ring. It's on auto. So I can only put it in um, program and shutter. Okay, but once I turn this, it goes straight into... Um, manual mode, okay? What I did was I, on the lens, I turned it on manual mode, okay? So this is autofocus right here. But if you put it in manual mode, what I like with the focus peaking is it tells you when it's clear. And then you just take the picture. And all the... Uh, with the dog moving, I had it in hybrid uh, autofocusing, which is uh, the camera decides between shutter and electronic. And with the dog moving, it was electronic. That's why you got blurry. But Leica is known with manual shooting, with manual lenses, and it's a fantastic camera. And plus the fact I can put it in macro, which I was showing a little bit last night. So this is a 28 millimeter. Some say it's like a 24 millimeter. And I showed you one picture where I stood at the door and I had the two TVs and the two monitors. You saw all four of them. And this is like, what, 270 degrees? See, that's 180. Yeah, as you can see over here with the lava like and stuff. Yeah. And I'm let me go back over here. I'm not used to this. This is a new setup right here, okay? So when I'm saying like this is 180 degrees, okay? So you can see it from here all the way to about right here. So it's kind of like Almost 270, all right? Uh, yeah. Well, might have been 240, okay? 
and it's great. Um, camera has right range, and plus, if you want to get up close to someone, 28 millimeter will do it. 50 millimeter, you try to get up close, you can get bokeh, but uh, that's why I got the uh, uh, SL2. And uh, just to show you, and I forgot to show you on the camera, this is how I have it set up. So I had this bag on first, okay? And I have it like this. And then with the, uh, all I need is this bag because I have all the batteries in there. Okay, so I got one in the camera. I got one in the um, SL2S. And I'm going to have to put this one back in too. It's SD card. Okay. So, this is what I do. I just put it like that. And I carry it like this. Okay. So, I have one camera. You can take it out and shoot it this way, or I can put that camera back in, get this camera out, and take a shot. And you see, you notice it's not hanging on the belt, and I just put it to the side. And then I walk around like this. Very comfortable. I don't have that double sling or whatever, and uh, this has the extra battery stuff. So, it looks like I'm a guy, a tourist, whatever, taking pictures. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. So with this is for a little bit farther reach, you know, the 45 millimeter. The battery life is not good, but it's, it's usable now. Now I can walk around, take pictures with this thing. Or before, I had a 24 to 70, and it's in that bag. I might change it out to the... 24 millimeter f1.4 and I'll put that in there that way I have a 24 millimeter and a 45 millimeter and it's great for uh, taking pictures so the 45 is 2.8 I have the 50 which is a 1.8 but it's a little bit bigger lens uh, so the 24 1.4 and this one for the SL2S and then for this one, the 28 millimeter, you know, which is a fixed lens. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. So they see, I just take it off and I put it back right in the uh, case. So it's right in here, another case. So I won't be bringing that along. I'll leave that in the trunk. Uh, the 24. What I might do is I have an extra case right here. And I got a smaller one. And what I'll do is when I take the camera out, I can put it in there and vice versa. I don't know. I, I got one where I can go around the belt and I just have that 24. And then I can swap out the lenses for the uh, SL2S. But that's how I'm going to do it. Travel. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And I know this video is too long, I start talking, then I get on a subject. But uh, just wanted to show you some pics, what I picked up. Um, by Wednesday, I'll be getting a, a thumb grip. I'm going to try it out. I have it on the A7C. But what I don't like about it is it covers up your hot shoe. You know, I don't use a flash or I don't need... Um, a microphone or anything, okay, hooked up to this, because it's like it has excellent built-in microphones in their cameras. So I can usually either hold it like this, or I can just put it on the hand grip and just walk around. And the botanical garden is going to open up again, so I'm going to get a lot of macro shots with this camera. So it's in manual mode or program mode or shutter mode. 
I'll figure out the uh, aperture. If someone can uh, give me a hint, I'll do that. But uh, I've been searching, and by the time they get to the aperture, you know, while I'm watching the video, I fall asleep. I'm sorry. I mean, it seems like when I eat something and I start watching, next thing I knew it is like, well, it said I watched it, but I don't remember it. <laughs> I, at least I gave it a like. But uh, anyway, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm looking for the black uh, softum. And I might put the red one on there when it comes in. So uh, uh, I was looking at the James Bond one. You know, uh, at the opening scene where... Guy shoots the gun and, and it looks like a barrel. Uh, the bullet goes down the barrel or whatever. That's what it looks like, all right? Uh, but that's being shipped from Korea. And the same thing as I was looking at a rope uh, thing. But uh, guy talked me out of it. He said, yeah, just get this and then uh, wait for the, uh, the red one or the black one or the gold one. So they got the accessories where they have a gold cap and uh, gold hood, whatever, on this thing. I, I like it stealthy. I like the black. I think the little red here, a red here, and then a little red here, I, I think that's all you need, okay? Uh, they do have a grip, you know, like for the ZFC, but this feels good in the hand, okay? And... I have two little function buttons right here. And let me go back to mark two. I get two function buttons, okay? Right there, all right? I'm trying to, yeah, now you can see it, okay? So most of the thumb grips on the older ones will cover these up and then you're holding it there. Uh, the new one, has little indents where you can hit the back of it and these functions will still work, but then it grooves in here and your thumb is right here. And the nice thing about the thumb grip is now you, you can handle the camera pretty good and I'm holding it two hands anyway, either by the lens or like this, okay? And uh, I got the safety, so I got it on my wrist and uh, uh, the thing is, when you have the controls on the right-hand side, you're usually hitting it by accident. So they do have features in the camera where they can lock the dials and stuff, okay? But then it's a pain in the butt because then you have to either go in a menu or set up a function button, you know, to disable it. But uh, I got exposure um, um, lock right here. And then, uh, so like when you go to the sun, okay, it gets everything dark. So if you go to the dark, you know, get the scene or the, the brightness you want, you put on that lock, it stays that way. And you go to the sun, take a picture of that bright object, and then you can go ahead and unlock it. That's a neat feature. This one right here changes it between um, uh, camera and uh, video, okay? This button is the ISO. This dial, you just, oh, you hit that. There, this is like your um, enter button, all right, your function button, okay? And then this right here is your dial, so that's your back. Uh, you know how you can, uh, the only thing is it takes you out of the menu. But uh, then, of course, the menu is like the function too. But uh, you just have your down dials. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll show some features of it. I'll show you about uh, how to take the battery out. And I, I did uh, a quick minute on showing how. So what you do is you just hit this. And then you just tap it in and it comes out. So after I did that video, now everybody's showing this, you know, in their videos. I said, well, this is what I was looking for to begin with. 
and I've waited, waited, and I fall asleep, and I miss it. So, anyway, that. Then, of course, the uh, SD card is in here. And then you have to close it. So, there, there's a few things, like uh, for the... Um, uh, there's a locking mechanism. So, if I put it in auto, okay, auto focus now. i got to hit it in order to lock it. Now it's locked. Now it can't move. Okay. But if I hit that little button right there, now I can move it. And it does not move fast. So it's kind of stiff, but that's the way I like it. Okay. And these are the meters uh, right up here or the feet. And this right here is the aperture. So if I have auto, then it's just program and shutter speed. This is manual. I think if I put it there, it might be in uh, aperture. So once you move this, it's either aperture or manual. If you put it on auto, then it's either program or shutter, which is different. Uh, so new camera systems, new uh, learning techniques. But uh, I'm excited. It's streamlined. There's only six menu bars, but there's like five for the video. So it's like on the Nikon. It uh, switches. Okay. And let me go back over here to ZV-1. So it switches. And uh, just a learning process. I'm liking what I'm seeing, okay? Um, if you have any advice and stuff, I'm willing to take it. I like it. It's an expensive camera. I told you the reason why I wanted this camera instead of, uh, let's say, the Sony AC, A7CR is because there's so many menu things in there. And then you're changing the lens. I didn't want to deal with it. I just want a camera, easy, point and shoot. You do the settings real quick, take the shot, and back off. So that's why I got it. And uh, it, it's not a ego thing that I have a Leica. No. I want to try out different camera systems, see if I like it or not. And then I'll share my experience with you guys. I don't know why I keep looking at the ZV-10. Uh, I guess I look better on that one than I do on this one. Well, anyway. So thank you for watching. Remember to stay safe. Keep smiling. Things always get better. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye, folks. Have a wonderful day. Oh my goodness, 43 minutes. Who would have ever known? I talk a lot. I'm an unnatural. Uh, I guess that's why I'm alone. Oh well. Bye, folks.